Hi everyone! Today I will be walking through a short series of labs to configure and deploy OpenStack. So by the end of the series, you will have an OpenStack environment up and running on two bare metal nodes, along with some other exciting stuff. So let's jump in and review what we're going to cover in this series. We're going to start by addressing some prerequisites on the two bare metal servers. We will bring the bare metal servers under management by Platform 9. Then we'll use the Platform 9 UI to assign roles like compute, network, and block storage to these servers. Once we have that foundation laid out, we will deploy a virtual machine. We will configure block storage, review backup options, and then you'll see how you can easily live migrate virtual machines. As we approach the end of the series, we'll cover topics such as multi-tenancy, networking, and deploying Kubernetes on top of OpenStack. In the first session, we will configure the two bare metal servers before they can be managed by OpenStack. To get started, we will deploy the Platform 9 host agent onto the servers. Then we will enable the Platform 9 onboarding role to simplify the KVM and OpenStack configuration. This replaces some of the manual steps that are required to deploy things like Open vSwitch, NTP, KVM kernel modules, and some other server-side prerequisites. Then we will configure host networking and global networking. Before we get started, let's take a brief moment to review the prerequisites. I should note that these are the prerequisites as of the time of this recording. However, the latest prerequisites can always be found in our public facing documentation. The operating systems we currently support for Platform 9 managed OpenStack include Rocky 9.1, Ubuntu 20.04, CentOS 7, and RHEL 7. For this lab, I will be using servers that are deployed with Ubuntu 20.04. As far as storage is concerned, please make sure that your servers have a minimum of 50 gigs of local or shared storage that will be used for the virtual machines and images. On the networking side, please ensure that your server has outbound access to the Platform 9 management plane via port 443. At a minimum, we also recommend having at least two network interfaces one on a VLAN for management traffic, and another interface on a different VLAN for VM network traffic. If you want to have a separate VLAN for storage traffic, you're more than welcome to do so, but for this workshop, we will be using two interfaces. Before we kick off the installation, let's take a moment to briefly review the Platform 9 managed OpenStack architecture, which is represented in this diagram here. On the left side, this represents our SaaS management plane. This is where the user interface lives, APIs, database, things like the Nova scheduler, basically all of the components that you would see in a traditional OpenStack control plane with some Platform 9 magic around it. On the right side, this represents hosts that are connected to the Platform 9 environment. So whether you have five hosts or 500, you can manage them all in a single pane of glass. These hosts communicate securely with our SAS management plane via outbound HTTPS on port 443. In order to onboard these servers, we will start by downloading and installing the Platform 9 host agent. The Platform 9 host agent is used to securely connect your infrastructure to your dedicated Platform 9 SAS management plane. The host agent installer can be downloaded from the Platform 9 UI and copied over to your bare metal servers. On these specific servers, I already downloaded the host agent installer prior to this video. Once you install the agent software on your server, the agent makes an outbound call to the SAS management plane that is specific to your account. At this point, an alert will appear in the Platform 9 UI notifying you that a server is waiting your authorization. 
What I have here is a terminal session for each of my two bare metal servers. And in the background is a Platform 9 UI. To obtain the Platform 9 installer, you'll need to log into your dedicated Platform 9 management plane in the browser. Navigate to Infrastructure, click New Host, and under the Download Installer dropbox, select the option that corresponds with the operating system that's installed on your bare metal servers. Then, copy the installation script over to each of your bare metal servers. As you can see here, there is a Platform 9 install script on each of my two servers. So let's go ahead and kick it off. I'll receive a prompt asking if I want to configure proxy settings. In my case, it's not required, so I'm going to select no. The second prompt asks if I would like to install NTP to keep the time in sync across the servers. So let's go ahead and select yes for this. Now we'll just wait for the script to finish executing. Now that the installation script finished executing, let's go back to the Platform 9 UI. What you'll see now is that there are two hosts awaiting authorization, meaning they are registered with the Platform 9 management plane and they're ready to have roles assigned to them. So the next thing we'll want to do is add the PF9 onboarding role to both hosts. I'm using the PF9 onboarding role to help satisfy some other prerequisites on my two servers, such as downloading and installing OpenVSwitch, KVM kernel modules, and more. An alternative to applying this role would be to use our PF9 Express utility that automates the entire host onboarding process, or by executing everything manually. Once I apply the onboarding role, I'll be able to proceed with completing a few more server-side prerequisites. So let's hop over to this, the terminal. First things first, I'll need to authenticate with my Platform 9 management plane. I have an admin RC file on each host that has all of the required authentication details. So I'll start by sourcing that. Then I'll run this command to obtain an authentication token using the OpenStack CLI, and then saving this token as an environment variable. This token will be referenced in a subsequent step. So each host that is registered with Platform 9 has a unique UUID that we'll need to reference in a subsequent API call. So I'm going to run the following command to store the unique host UUID in an environment variable. So that way I don't have to manually find the UUID and specify it in each API call. Once you have your authentication token and the host UUID, we will run this API command against the Platform 9 management plane. This specific API call will tell Platform 9 that I want to apply the PF9 onboarding role on a specific host, which in turn will have the Platform 9 host agent service on the host to orchestrate the installation and the configuration of the required prerequisites. If you're curious to know what's happening behind the scenes, feel free to take a look at var log pf9 host agent log. And here you'll be able to see the status of the application of this pf9 onboarding role. So as we can see here, the pf9 onboarding role has been installed successfully. Now let's move on to the networking prerequisites. We're going to set up one host as a network node since we will be running Neutron in non-DVR mode. And we will be enabling VXLAN tenant networks. So Open vSwitch, also commonly referenced as OVS, is a major component 
in making all of this work. Um, Open vSwitch is how we create virtual network switches within OpenStack. Bridges are like the central hubs within OVS, allowing us to connect different network components together. So to configure OVS, we'll need to run a couple of commands. The first command we'll use is OVS via CTL add br br dash ext. So let's break it down. OVS via CTL, this is a utility for interacting with OVS. Add dash br, this tells OVS that we want to create a new bridge. br dash ext, this is the name we're giving the bridge. In this case, we're creating a bridge for the external network meant for connecting to the physical network. So the BREXT bridge we just created is like a central hub in our network. So now imagine plugging a cable into this hub. That's what we're going to do in the next command. We're attaching an interface to the BREXT bridge. This interface might represent a physical network connection or a bonded connection for redundancy. You can run OVS-VSCTL show to confirm that you see your interface underneath this BREXT bridge. Now there's just one more thing we need to configure before we move on to the next session which is to set up the network options using the network config page in the Platform 9 UI. As you can see in the dashboard, I'm being prompted to configure networking. So let's go ahead and click on that. The first option is routing mode. In this particular setup, we're gonna leave this unchecked. With this being unchecked, this means that both east-west and north-south traffic using floating IPs are handled through one or more dedicated network nodes. Next, we have DNS domain. This configuration option enables DNS resolution across virtual machines within a given tenant network. We'll go ahead and leave the default value of DHCP servers per network. And then we have network type. Here, you can choose the type of networks that you would like Neutron to support as well as the type of networks you would like Neutron to provide to self-service users for creating tenant networks. You can drag and arrange to specify the order in which networks are chosen upon tenant network creation. In this lab, I want to enable VXLAN networks and have them available as tenant networks. I also want to enable VLAN tagged networks. So I'm going to check these boxes as follows. And when enabling tunneling based networks, such as VXLAN, this requires a VNID uh, identifier range to be specified. So I'm just going to set 4096 to 5000. Once that is all populated, click on update to save your changes. And with that, all of the host side prerequisites have now been completed. Thank you for your time and looking forward to the next section.